Hey guys, today we are putting these Banyo watercolors to the test in a field test. And we are going to paint this super cute illustration of Kara from my webcomic, Seven Inch Kara. So keep watching. Hey guys, so today we are putting these Banyo, Banyo watercolors to the test. If you're unfamiliar with these, click here to check out my swatch and unbox video. So I already have a really cute illustration already drawn. And this might be a huge shame because I have a feeling these, these watercolors are not very good. I've got my super soft white stroke here. I am going to erase to remove the graphite. And then I'm going to use some low tack tape, probably washi tape like so to adhere it to this masonite board. So I've got my daisy palette. I've also got a cup of clean water, an eyedropper, and I've got brushes off camera. This small set comes with a tiny round that I can't even retrieve. And it also has an orange that I think is supposed to be a skin color. Let me actually grab a piece of piece of scratch paper and we'll find out. Always better to test before you commit. Yeah, I think that's supposed to be like a flesh tint. So I think rather than mixing a skin tone, which is what I, I normally do, I know a lot of artists will actually utilize pre-mixed skin tones in these sort of palettes. So I'm just going to use the skin tone they have and we'll roll with that. I'm gonna try to do as little color mixing as possible. Let's just consider that a challenge. So I'm gonna grab some of this sort of teal blue is what it looks like. I don't know if it actually is. And I'm gonna add it to, actually, I may be smartest if I don't do a wash, we'll see. Actually, thinking about that as well, I'm just gonna go ahead and use that pre-mixed skin tone and I'm just going to roll it around on my palette. I'm not even gonna mix up a wash of it. And I'm gonna go ahead start painting in the first layer of Kara skin. And kind of keeping my eyes open and paying attention to the variety, the wide variety of materials, techniques, and methods that other comic watercolorists and other com uh, watercolor illustrators use for their art. So figure I'll bring some of those to the table recommend you guys always keep your eyes open to see what other people are doing and always be willing to try other people's techniques. And going wet into wet, I'm just sort of brushing in a more saturated version of that color. And these are probably the sort of watercolors that get kind of gross and muddy if you overwork them. So I'm going to let this dry. Let me move this up for you guys. I'm noticing a little bit of muddiness. It could be I'm using the wrong kind of brush for this. It could be um, this is just not a very good set. I mean, for what I, for what I paid, my expectations are pretty low. So I just grabbed kind of a scarlet color and I'm going to work this into the cheeks on her lip, above her eyes and under her neck. And it's, oh, and underneath her nose. So it's pretty much just uh, that light. Well, you guys can't see. I'll show you guys in a minute if you're curious. I say like you can answer me. <laughs> um, it's actually just this with a lot of water added to it. And I'll give that a chance to dry as well. Now I have to think about what color I want her dress to be and what color I want her sweater. I think I want to do her dress red at least the skirt. So working straight from the palette, very little mixing. 
I'm just grabbing some of that red. I'll wash in a little bit extra too. And I'll go ahead and fill in the first button. Also going to grab a little bit of blue, that dark blue, that ultramarine blue at the top row, or from the top row. And I'm gonna do the top half of her eyes. I'm gonna do the same thing with the largest flower and then these little fluffs. And give that a chance to dry as well. So this has had a chance to dry and I've had a chance to do a little bit of rearranging. I'm gonna grab some more of that skin type color. Try to grab a lot of it because I want to do something kind of, there we go, a little more saturated. So far these aren't bad and would make for a really handy pocket set or a set for a younger artist or somebody who um, just kind of wants to do like character illustrations, like a fashion sketch set kind of thing. I mean, they're gonna be a little more opaque. You're gonna have trouble blending, but if you're really just like sketching and you just wanna block in your color, so far they're not bad at all. Go ahead and activate that yellow ochre. I'm gonna try to do my mixing over here. And these two slots would probably be useful for doing larger washes. And you're gonna have to keep your layers minimal with a set like this because there's a lot of optical brighteners. So as you layer, it's gonna get muddy. So you kinda wanna get in there, get your colors and get out. And I'm going to go ahead and get the centers. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a smaller brush and I'm gonna try something that will probably backfire. I'm gonna take some of this sort of a red violet color and I'm gonna try to do a shadow on the skin. I say try because with these inexpensive watercolors, it tends to just pick them up or spider all over the place. But so far, maybe I didn't overwork this piece yet. So far, not bad. I'm getting a little bit of pickup on her neck, but not too noticeable. I should just leave that as is probably because I don't, it's one of those things where we can't really blend it out. If we pick it up with a piece of paper towel, it's just going to make it worse. So we should probably call that good enough. Go ahead and switch over to the yellow ochre and start filling in her sweater. Now the yellow ochre is a, kind of an anemic color, especially compared to how vibrant some of the other colors are in this little collection. I think I paid, I'd have to double check, I think I paid less than $13 for this set. And I got it on Amazon. And the thing about Amazon is as things grow in popularity, their prices go up. So it's not necessarily a quality thing. So I really wouldn't pay more than 13 tops for this, but you guys will be able to find a link in the description below and you can see for yourself. But I'm, as I'm telling you, there are sets that are almost as good for about, or that are better for about 15. So I wouldn't pay more than 13 for this set. But it's not a bad little set so far. Of course, how dark that shadow is, and that is entirely my fault. That is not the watercolor's fault. That's gonna bug me. Boy, that purple is intense. Let's try muting it down by painting some of that skin tone, that flesh tone sort of stuff on top of it. Because 
I think that'll actually work. You can't exactly, with these kind of watercolors, I feel like you can't exactly blend them out. They're gonna get really muddy. You can, however, layer them and sort of mute out the colors just as long as you don't expect miracles from them. So I think, I think that was a good solution to that problem. I'm gonna try to pick up a lot of yellow ochre. We'll see if we can get any more color saturation. We cannot, I kinda wanna try blending a darker color. Another thing is since you're working, or at least I'm working, I realize that doing light washes with these watercolors is just not going to work to anybody's advantage. Um, these are probably intended to be used very thick Probably not with too stiff a brush, even though it comes with a fairly stiff bristle brush because that's going to pick up your previous layers because this is full of op optical brighteners. Um, so like uh, things that will make the co colors in the pans visibly pop. So like chalk or talc. Um, and those don't, those don't really like being blended. They don't really like layering very well. So to do a thin wash with these watercolors would just kind of be a problem. You would, you, would you would be disappointed, I feel. So we're not gonna try to do a thin wash. We're gonna try to do, well, we're gonna do very limited thin washes, um, but we're gonna try to just do what works best for these watercolors and figure out how to make them work for you. And given the fact that they're very inexpensive, sort of uh, knockoff watercolors, I don't really mind working within their limitations because it's not like they're promising something that they're not delivering. So you guys might wonder why I'm being kind on these when I've been very harsh in other watercolor reviews in the past, and that's because these are not pretending to be any nicer than they actually are. So they're not taking advantage of anybody's ignorance. Okay, I'm going to allow those layers to dry. Okay, so she's looking a little weird with her hair not colored in. Let's go ahead and fix that. So there is a Venetian red here, and those of you who are familiar with this character, my Kara, know I usually like to start her hair with Venetian red. And I will say that these watercolors don't seem to have a lot of glycerin in them as a humectant. Um, they are a little dry, a little chalky, but they're not drying too chalky. They're actually pretty vibrant, which is nice. I'm sure over time, and uh, with exposure to oxygen, they're gonna get weird because that's just cheap watercolors in a nutshell. But so far, they're actually not bad at all, which is nice because I get so many people who write to me asking for watercolor recommendations and they're either adult, heck, some of my, some of my comic artist peers who have been making art for a really long time ask me for racks and I give them, you know, I recommend what I like and what I have experience with. And then people are like, oh, that's too expensive. And it's understandable if you're buying for a child and you don't wanna make a huge investment in something that they might not be interested in, in like two weeks. So I'm really glad that these perform decently well because it means I have something I can recommend that's going to kind of hit that sweet spot that people have without being too expensive and without requiring years of watercolor experience in order to be able to use to their full advantage. And younger people these days also have kind of the benefit of YouTube to show them how to use things. So something that would have taken someone from my generation, you know, about a year of regular practice to be proficient at, they can watch videos and see how other people handle the materials even that isn't a huge deterrent. But so far, I think these would be great for character sketches, for quick studies, anything where you're pretty much okay with just slapping 
paint down quickly and not trying to blend and not trying to do too many layers. I think these are really ideal for that kind of creator. Or if you're just kind of interested in having a couple of watercolor sketches as part of your repertoire and you don't think you're going to use watercolor very often or for very large, I can't imagine using these for a large piece. I can't really imagine using it for something bigger than this. Maybe five by seven, but not bigger than that. And this is decent. This is Fabriano cotton rag watercolor paper. So it is nicer watercolor paper rag, ah, words, <laughs> watercolor paper. Um, I think, but I don't know for sure, that it would probably slough off um, cellulose papers. That there's probably not enough in the fibers to kind of hold. Okay, so I just mixed yellow ochre, a little bit of the Venetian red I used in Kara's hair, and some yellow in order to get a more saturated yellow ochre which you guys can see I'm now applying. But yeah, I'm not sure that these watercolors wouldn't just basically wash flake right off a cheaper paper. And I can test that later on, like in Louisiana, I can bring these with me and do some little tests and we can know for sure. But if you guys have experience with these little watercolors, and you like them, and I like them, so, you know, we can like them together, mutual appreciation study. But if you've used them on cheaper papers and you know how they handle, please let me know in the comments below, and that can help other people find out whether or not these are good watercolors for them. I'm gonna switch over to hopefully a brush with a finer point, zoom, -dee zoom, zoom, zoom. And we'll use a darker brown, maybe even a dark brown mixed with black on our hair. Now, something that's nice about the fact that this isn't a hinged set that you can remove the top off completely is that I'm going to take it over to my sink when I'm done and I'm just gonna clean the entire top off. And I don't have to worry about getting water into well, you can't see it, but you don't, I don't even have to worry about getting water into my other pans because it won't even be connected. So that can be great if you're a parent who bought these for a kid and you know you're the one who's gonna be really cleaning it up. It just requires very little hassle or effort. So I mixed the dark brown with the black to get a much darker brown. You might have to mix some more of that. I am using nicer brushes with the set. I'm not using the brush that came with the set. That thing looked like a nightmare. I am using nicer brushes than you would probably, if you had a child artist, uh, I'm using nicer brushes than you'd probably have just laying around. So if you're buying this for a young artist in your life, I do recommend maybe some squirrel or camel or a, a blend. So a brush that's a blended blend of fibers. So something soft that's not going to basically scrape the paint. I think a synthetic would probably scrape the paint off of the paper, especially if you were using a cellulose, like a paper, I'm sorry, a wood pulp based paper, cellulose paper rather than like a cotton rag paper like I'm using here. And I'll show you guys in a minute, but these really make the water muddy. And that's all those optical brighteners, all that chalk or talc or whatever they're using to make the colors pop, grabbing some of that red violet to paint. Oh, not thick enough. 
Yeah, these would not be watercolors that would be capable of glazing. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the Venetian red here and then underarm. And the dry time on these is also really fast, which is another reason why these might be good if you have a younger artist or if you're new to watercolor and you're kind of impatient and you're not yet familiar with dry times. Um, these dry or seem to dry fairly quick, probably because they don't have a lot of um, glycerin in them or other watercolor humectants to kind of help keep the pans moist. So they do seem to dry faster. All right, speaking of dry, I'm going to step away, let these dry. All right, so almost everything on the foreground has dried. I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to do a larger background wash using that color there. So while that sky dries, I'm going to work my way on over and around to that red violet. And I'm just going to tighten up some of the shadow. Also I'm going to activate a few other colors and it's almost reminiscent of like, I don't know, like putting water on chalks. I remember Heidi and I did the Savannah Sidewalk Chalk Art Festival one year. And we figured out that we could paint with our chalks if we ground them up and mix water with them. And that way we could get softer blends. And this is really reminiscent of painting with those ground up watered down chalks, which I mean, isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. I've already praised this little set a fair bit. But if you are experienced with watercolor and you're thinking about this set as like a little travel set, just, I guess, be prepared for the learning curve that awaits you. Oh, and there's a white in here. And that would probably be to mix pastels with these sort of watercolors because I just cannot imagine anybody being able to do corrections with that. And these are so opaque. I'll show you guys in a minute, but they kind of go over and cover up my black line art. I want something a little more orange for the back of this flower. Not that orange. Oh yeah, this hand is really weird. All right, so for something a little bit different than your normal watercolors, this Benyo watercolor set might be just what you're looking for. Handles almost like gouache, but not, if you're more familiar with gouache, it's not really like gouache at all, but it can be a useful tool if you want to do in the field sketches. If you're only interested in doing character sketches, or you have a young artist and you want to give them something decent, but you don't want to break the bank and you don't want to waste money either. All right, guys, I think we are just about done with this Banyo, Banyo watercolor field test. I hope you guys found it helpful, useful, and informative, and maybe I've even introduced you to a product you hadn't yet thought about using. You can find where you can get your own set if these look good in my description down below. I got these off of Amazon. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys will check out my other watercolor videos here on this channel, as well as my dozens of helpful watercolor tutorials in my watercolor basics section or series rather at natosoup.blogspot.com. So thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.